70 million years ago, on a desolate beach in North America, a T-Rex has just finished feeding on a dead sauropod. As the giant predator leaves and vanishes into the tree line, three Archaeoraptors appear out of nowhere and begin ripping meat out of the big gaping hole the T-Rex had left in the sauropod. When suddenly, an eerie shadow passes over the carcass. It's a male Quetzalcoatlus who has spotted the carcass and he's hungry. The Archaeoraptors run into the tree line for safety. Standing at 12 foot and weighing 400 pounds with a wingspan of up to 40 feet in length, Quetzalcoatlus is far too big and menacing for the Archaeoraptors to compete with. This is what life was like in North America 70 million years ago. In today's video, we'll be covering one of these animals, Quetzalcoatlus. We will take a look at how we think they lived, as well as what else we may know about them. Enjoy. The first Quetzalcoatlus fossils were discovered in Texas from the Maastrichtian Javelina Formation at Big Bend National Park and was dated to 68 million years ago. There are two known species belonging to Quetzalcoatlus. The fossil discovered in Texas belongs to Quetzalcoatlus nothropi. The smaller fossils, originally thought to be a juvenile nothropi, was actually the second species, Quetzalcoatlus lossoni. Recent estimates based on knowledge of Astarchid proportions place its wingspan at 36 to 40 foot. Remains found in Texas in 1971 indicate that they had a minimum wingspan of about 36 foot. Generalized height in a bipedal stance, based on its wingspan, would have been at least 9.8 feet high at the shoulder. Skull material from Lasoni shows that Quetzalcoatlus had a very sharp and pointed beak. That is contrary to some earlier reconstructions that show a blunter snout. A skull crest, which may have been used for mating, was also present, but its exact form and size are still unknown. Unlike many animals that fly in today's world, Quetzalcoatlus had no feathers on its body. Its body included wings of skin and fibres of keratin. Quetzalcoatlus had the same wingspan as a small seaplane, stood as tall as a giraffe, and was even taller than a T-Rex. So how could it fly? Some phenologists actually doubt that Quetzalcoatlus ever flew. Instead, they suggest that it shuffled around on the ground with its wings completely folded up. But recent studies show that Quetzalcoatlus was strong enough to fly and remain in the air. It is widely accepted that Quetzalcoatlus took to the air by crouching, springing forwards, and essentially using its wings to vault up into the air from there, they could throw their wings open and use their power to flap their wings and fly up into the sky. Even though Quetzalcoatlus is giant, it's actually really light for its size. That's because like modern birds and some dinosaurs, Quetzalcoatlus's bones were full of air pockets. One study concluded that Quetzalcoatlus could soar through the sky at 80 miles per hour at an altitude of 15,800 feet for an entire week. This is only what was technically possible and there isn't anything to suggest that Quetzalcoatlus actually did this regularly, only that they were capable of it. There have been a number of different ideas proposed about the lifestyle of Quetzalcoatlus. The area of the fossil site was 250 miles removed from the coastline and there were no indications of large rivers or deep lakes nearby at the end of the Cretaceous, leading scientists in 1975 to reject a fish-eating lifestyle. Instead, they suggested that Quetzalcoatlus scavenged on the carcasses of titanosaur sauropods, such as Alamosaurus. But in 1996, paleontologists rejected the scavenging hypothesis pointing out that the lower jaw bent so strongly downwards that even when it was closed, completely, a gap of over two inches remained between it and the upper jaw, very different from the hooked beaks of specialised scavenging birds. They suggested that, with its long neck vertebrae and long toothless jaws, Quetzalcoatlus fed like modern-day skimmers, catching fish during flight while cleaving the waves with its beak. 
While this skim feeding view became widely accepted, it was not subjected to scientific research until 2007, when a study showed that, for a large pterosaur, it was not a viable method because the energy cost would be too high due to the excessive drag. In 2008, scientists published an examination of possible feeding habits and ecology of the family of pterosaurs that included Quetzalcoatlus. They noted that most of the remains are found in inland deposits far from the seas or other large bodies of water required for skimming. Additionally, the beak, jaw and neck anatomy are unlike those of any other skimming animal. Rather, they concluded that this family were more likely terrestrial stalkers, similar to modern storks, and they probably hunted small vertebrates on land or in small streams. Though Quetzalcoatlus, like other pterosaurs, was a quadruped when on the ground, Quetzalcoatlus and other members of its family have fore and hind limb proportions more similar to modern running hooved mammals than to their smaller cousins, implying that they were uniquely suited to a terrestrial lifestyle. To conclude, there are still so many questions around this magnificent animal, from their actual feeding behaviours to their ranking in the food chain, with more and more specimens of ancient animals being uncovered every year, and our relentless thirst to pursue more advanced technology, who knows what we may discover in the future. Perhaps we'll even make a discovery that completely disproves everything we thought we knew about Quetzalcoatlus. Thanks for watching.